see. Okay, so today I'm doing a training session with Maddie. We're using platinum food. Okay, uses a lot of training treats. Okay. What I like about it is that it doesn't make my treat pouch all skanky and manky. It doesn't make my coat pockets manky. So if I'm in a real rush, can't find my treat pouch, I can just dip my hand in there, grab a load out. Each piece is sort of the size of a thumbnail and you can just split it in half really easily and actually into quarters is what I tend to do with small dogs. Okay, so it's a really economical way of using dog treats. Um, of course, you can just use your dog's ordinary kibble, but sometimes we need something a little more high value and this is certainly quite high value. Um, it's good quality food. So, today we're gonna be working a little on a center bed, just using just a comfy, cozy bed, which I'm gonna have in the corner over here. And I'm gonna be doing this with Maddie. Maddie can, okay? Good girl, good job, good. So, method number one is just luring. Yes. And the second the dog goes into the bed, marking it as correct. Yes. And rewarding her from the bed, okay, okay. Bed, yes. Good. Bed, yes. Good job, good. Okay. Good, bed, yes, good job, good, good, okay, bed, yes, good. This normally happens really quickly, you probably won't need to use another method. Sometimes, no, sometimes we can then, um, obviously we're doing the luring, we then want to start making it less of an obvious lure so we can um, throw the food to the bed, bed, good so that we can send them from a distance. Bed. Good. Good. Bed. 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 Okay. That's method number two. So method number three is that we can put food into the bed putting food into the bed, restrain the dog from getting to the bed, and then use the verbal command, good girl. Good, and then release them to it. And then often there's a bit more of a burst of wanting to go forward to get to the bed. Okay. Good, okay. Good girl. Good job. So, dear God, I'm a little excited today. So, restrain the dog, put the food in the bed. Good girl. In the bed. Good girl. Okay, and we can do this from a bigger and bigger distance. Okay, so. Maddie, come here. Maddie clearly finds that method very arousing. <laughs> Maddie, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, chill. Good. Okay, so I'm going to hold her back from here. Square the collar. Good girl. Good job. Good. Okay, we then want to start adding a bit more duration. You can use all three methods. Good girl. No. Good. So when she's staying there intermittently, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. That noise is the new Frenchie that I've got in. Good. Good girl. Making sure that you have a clear release cue for when they're allowed to leave the bed. Okay. Good girl. Bed. Good job. Good. Down. Mad. Down. Good girl. Good. Down. Good. And turning your body away. Good. So that she's able to understand. Down. Good. 
but she still has to do it regardless of whether I'm looking at her or not. No, bed. Good. Down. Good girl. Okay. So those are three really quick, easy ways of teaching a centre bed. It's one of the easiest behaviours to teach. Good. The duration of the behaviour. Good girl. Okay. Is similar to um, just teaching a stay. So rewarding the dog intermittently for being there. Good. Using that duration marker of good, communicating to the dog what you're currently doing is correct, continue to do so, and reward will come at some point. Okay, good girl. And then also adding movement and being able to walk away from and not having such a, a heavy reliance on us being able to look at the dog saying, good, good girl, good girl. We don't need to be doing that all the time when our dog is in their bed, when our dog is waiting well. Good girl. Yeah, so, centre bed, teach you to stay.